Oh my god. You really want us to mention the hat. Of all the podcasts and all the towns and all the world. And he walks into mine. <laughs> That's pretty good. Thanks, dude. One, two, three, four. These boys only want the best of. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that microbation. They want the shit that pops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. These boys are the Oscar Wieners. Yum. Welcome to Oscar Wieners, oh. the only show on the internet where Hollywood's biggest night is crashed by the <gasps> Nazis. Blast! <laughs> Drat. I'm your, I'm your host, Humphrey. And I'm your co-host, Blue Regard Q Kazoo. Esquire. But, you can call me Ander. And you can call me Michael. Nice. I will. I think I will, actually. Um, this is a show where every week uh, we pick a Best Picture winner at random, and we talk about it. Every week. Uh, and decide if it deserved it. Even if we didn't see the others. <laughs> Mostly, most likely have not seen the others, let's be honest. Now yeah. Now we're, we're getting into the 40s. How many of these movies? Some of these movies I don't even think are real. Casablanca I've heard of. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it ran against. We'll talk about it, but I'm sure it's probably a bunch of nonsense. It's probably a bunch of like World War II propaganda films <laughs> that it beat I out. I mean, arguably this is one. <laughs> yeah, so you're probably well. <laughs> as soon as it started, I was like, "Oh no, am I going to need to know history?" Yeah, because it went into the whole background, and they're speaking like a mile a minute, and I'm like, "Mm-mm." We'll get into it, but for how kind of compact this movie is, it's like so dense. It feels I don't know. I felt it. I thought it like pretty dense. Well, it's the entire weight of World War Two just on this plot, <laughs> which is supposed to be a romance, and I'm like, oh no, this is kind of heavy. Yeah. So um, today's movie is 1942 release, but 1943 Best Picture winner Casablanca. Um, really. Yeah, what did you watch? I watched. Uh, did you watch Along Came Polly? I did watch Along Came Polly again. Yes. Um, I was. Well, I wasn't confused because I was already familiar with it, but um, didn't really know how World War II would come into play. Thought maybe it was some sort of director's cut. Um, the Polly cut. <laughs> it was the Polly cut, dude. Casablanca <sighs> is still, according to the American Film Institute, the one of the three best movies ever made or at least one of the best american movies i don't know how that list works top three uh, top three it's number three okay and then on sight and sound which is a british thing they put out uh their 2022 new like they do it every 10 years they do like the best movie it's best 100 best movies of all time and the british Casablanca people was yeah okay sorry and casablanca was ranked 63 <laughs> it, loser it was tied with it, it was tied with goodfellas and the third man um but yeah and the goonies is it crazy that i get goodfellas and the goonies confused all the time yeah absolutely They're, they couldn't be well i haven't seen opposite. i haven't seen either but i just hear a title with goodfellas I, no i hear a, a, a geo i told you i've only seen seven movies well um nine now 10 maybe 9 or 10 somewhere around there yeah. um i get confused by the geo yeah i think maybe it's kind of the same concept is it 
No. Okay. Um, Not even a spiritual successor. No, I don't think there is one Italian in the the film, The Goonies. Well, then there's The Godfather, which is triply confusing because it's also a Geo movie. Godfather and Goodfellas are more similar. Right. Than they're than the Goonies and Goodfellas. Right. But then there's also GoBots, which is confusing because that's another Geo movie. And I'm like, which is which? You know what, what I mean? What is the matter with you? What do you mean? What is the matter with you? Um, I'm undiagnosed ADD. Um, I have oh, shit. hip problems, back problems, Fuck. uh plaque so psoriasis. Sorry. Yeah, I actually have a lot going on right now. I'm so sorry. So if you could just kind of just throw me a bone and say Goodfellas is Goonies, everything will be okay. You know? They are. I kind of expect They're the same to. movie. Right. Thank you. Yeah. As my friend, um, I expect so talking... you to support me in that. We're not friends. So we're, <laughs> we're business partners. So right. we're talking about 1942's Casablanca, which is considered one of the best movies ever made. Is it crazy to do that this was made like in peak World War II? Like Pearl Harbor was invaded... I think the year prior. A little bit, yeah. And they're just like, would, let's like, make some films. It's yeah, it's being made as World War Two is raging across like <laughs> Europe, and I think they were, I think they were fighting in Africa too, right? And then, anyway, That's but yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Um, and this movie is, I've been thinking about how to summarize this movie. Mm -hmm. It's like weirdly complicated, but I'll try and boil it down to like it's simplest elements okay basically rick blaine played by humphrey bogart is he runs a saloon in casablanca which is in french morocco on the continent of africa and uh world war ii is happening <laughs> um the casablanca is is control like kind of Policed by uh, Vichy, the Vichy French, who are uh, basically Nazi sympathizers, like French Nazi sympathizers. And Rick's just hanging out. He's doing his thing. He's very cynical. And who should come back into his life oh, but his great love? Unbelievable. Isla, Ilsa Ilsa. Lund. Ilsa. Played by, played by Ingrid Bergman, uh, who is married to a Czechoslovakian resistance fighter yeah named Victor Laszlo played by Paul Hein Henry Heinrich I have all of this pulled up on uh letterbox but um every time he entered the frame and he's like I'm Victor Laszlo I was I couldn't help but think about Camp Laszlo do you remember that show yeah and I kind of just saw him as a a cartoon orange monkey uh <laughs> That's so weird. Honestly, it enhanced my experience, I think. <laughs> um, but they sort of have a, a love um, triangle, I believe is the shape it's, going on. It's so, Yeah, it's a love, I would call it a love triangle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to ask, what did you think of this movie? Because So I was excited to hear your opinion because you're famous for watching the greatest movies of all time and being like, I don't know, like a four out of ten? Well, hold on, hold on. We've <laughs> We've only seen... We've been doing this exercise for a short while. We've only seen a, a handful of, of Oscar best pictures. But I mean, in general, I feel like you'll see movies that I'm like, shit was fine. Like, you just see movies and you're like, that I'm like, mm -hmm. that was incredible. Five stars. And you're like, yeah, it was like three stars. It was fine. I don't know. I think I understand. I don't understand what's good <laughs> <laughs> in general. I don't know what the public consensus is going to be on a film. I can't. I can't tap into that. I know what I like. I know that. What do you like? Sinbad is probably better than Citizen Kane, even though I've never seen Citizen Kane. I'm just like ninety five percent sure. Sinbad's um, the cartoon. Yes. Okay. Um. Like Emperor's New Groove is definitely better than. Don't. What's that stupid, racist movie? Gone uh, with the Wind. Birth of a Nation. Oh, okay. Gone with the Wind. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely better than Birth of a Nation. <laughs> um, so what did you think about Casablanca? It's I'm getting, the vibe that you liked it. I do. I actually really liked okay. this movie. I think this is probably out of all the ones we've seen. So I think. This one is definitely 
Oscar worthy. I haven't seen any of the other nominees, I guarantee it, but I tend not to watch movies from the 40s. I tend not to yeah. watch movies pre-2000. But the this will make an exception for it. This was as soon as it started, my heart dropped a little bit cuz I was like, "Oh no. There's so much history. They're giving well, there's there's not a lot of history. It's just you're just thrust into conflict and I'm like, "Oh no, I haven't been in US history in many years. Um I might have to do research on this if I'm going to even understand this movie." Halfway through, I realized it was in black and white. I'm like, what is this? This is not what I'm used to. But at <laughs> its core, I do think it's a really compelling love story. And I don't think it's like any movie I've ever seen. Like, I, I think there were parts of it, even though it was from many, many decades ago, that still felt very real. Like the moment when Rick is just chilling in his bar, Sam's slapping the piano, just killing it, shredding it. And then Ilsa steps in, and then it's kind of like it perfectly captures the moment of when when that person walks into the place that you're in. You know what I mean? It's like maybe it's maybe it's someone you've had a crush on or an ex or someone you used to be friends with, but like when that person walks in, you're like, oh no, anybody but this person. Like now my entire night is changed. I think it captures that moment so, so well. Ilsa hasn't said one word yet, and already she's a compelling character in my eyes because of how she's been built up. And I thought that was really cool. I thought the moments where they just kind of like linger on characters' faces, I thought those were really cool. Where it's just like, oh, this man is deeply in thought and disturbed and thinking about his past. I really liked it. And then just iconic... Cool. And then, then it's just dropping bars, dude. Just iconic line after iconic line where I'm like, oh, yeah. like... Where it's well, the puzzle pieces are starting to click into place, like certain references to this, where I've started to populate and I start to understand, like old episodes of, I don't know, I'm sure there's an Simpsons. episode of Simpsons or Fairly Odd Parents or something Family where I'm like, guy. okay, now I now I get it, <laughs> like I got to go back and yeah. watch that now. Literally the last line in the movie, I was like. Oh right, that's what this is from. Yeah. Where he's like, "Louis, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship." Which I think I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, it was like, "Oh, they said the <laughs> thing. It's beautiful." It's like when they say the name of the movie in the movie. Yeah, this one um, wasn't as satisfying because they say Casablanca a lot. Yeah, like I love in Star Wars where Luke is like, "This sure is a Star Wars." <laughs> it's like it's iconic. <laughs> um, I love when um. I love when they say this this sure is back to the future part two. <laughs> Boy, Doc, this is really back to the future part two up in here. Boy, the Dark Knight Rises is. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Boy, how that Dark Knight Rises. I really am glad that you like this movie. I think this movie rules. Um, I'd seen it once before when I was a kid, and I think I was kind of bored by it, but also I was like, you know, like a teenager or whatever. But angst angst Love is i was like broken. <laughs> i was like oh it must suck to have a beautiful woman walk into a bar and like there'd be tension between you nobody's even given me a kiss <laughs> <laughs> somebody give me a smooch and then i'll review this film how about that <laughs> uh, um i agree with you that hump get him so all right i feel like there's a lot to say about this movie like Okay, Humphrey Bogart mm -hmm. as Rick Blaine is such a compelling character. He's like funny. His like cynicism is funny, but also like he seems really tortured, but also he's like really cool and like is actually very like noble throughout the movie mm -hmm. in like subtle ways. Um he's kind of complicated and interesting. I think Ilsa it's hard. She's like a little bit lacking in character beyond like she is serving she's just like a thing for these two men to kind of like desire or something that's that's true that's fair to say at the same time though she is also compelling you know what it's not her story i don't think yeah so like as much as i would like her to have more 
depth, like maybe you know more about her. I think that kind of lends itself to, I don't know. I don't know if we're really supposed to. I don't think Rick knows all that much about her. It's just kind of this surface level knowledge that he's very passionate about. And they're both passionate about each other. Like when she, That's... like they, well, first of all, they made the critical I don't know much about relationships, but they made a critical mistake in saying, like, let's just not know anything about each other. Wouldn't that be a fun activity for us? Wouldn't that be a fun <laughs> character building thing? Like, what is that? That was unusual. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Like, oh, I'm not going to tell you the fact that I have a husband who maybe is alive. I don't know. And then... It's... She... Yeah. <laughs> what am... I did laugh out loud when... They were getting... Where were they going? They were going to... Um, were they going to the United States? Where were they, Where was that train going? They were trying to catch a train. I don't know where that train was going. I forget. Um, I know they're in Paris. Yeah. They were They were going to leave the country together because it was being occupied by the Nazis. Um, mm. And then she just leaves him a note where she just says, Bye. Don't ask me where I'm going or why. I just can't come. That was crazy to me. I was like, oh my god. I think this movie almost created the trope of like, let's not say what is going on so there can be drama. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the characters can like be turmoiled by something. Like, I, the movie is about these characters, the kind of three main or mostly, mostly Rick. Rick and Ilsa. It's about them realizing like their problems are so small in the grand scheme of like a world war yeah that it's like there's so much bigger things than just us being in love and we have to like kind of give up those things right this movie feels for the sake bigger. of like the cause right exactly. exactly that's what that's what i was gonna say it feels like it feels the 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 like borders of this story feel much larger than just like the you know back lot sets that are very good right. and fun. This movie feels bigger than Lord of the Rings. You know, I don't disagree with you. Maybe it's just because we understand the context. Like, we know what World War II is and what the consequences are and what's at stake. And then Lord of the Rings, I had no familiarity with. I was just kind of along for the ride. I don't know where they were going. I don't know how big that world even is. Well, I think part of what makes Casablanca feel so big, and it's one of my favorite things about this movie, is as much as like the Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman stuff is happening, mm -hmm. there are so many small moments, like so many, where it's like refugees talking amongst themselves, trying to like figure out how to get out of Casablanca. Yeah. This movie loves kind of farting around in like the gray of like like the kind of morally gray stuff yeah yeah i just find i find this i find all the characters in this movie like not all of them but a lot of them very complicated and i kind of feel bad i feel i feel a little bit for for uh laszlo do you, do you yeah. know what a baxter is baxter like a dog yeah it's a dog's name <laughs> baxter is no. the baxter is the rabbit from arthur is that what you're referring to no, so a Baxter <laughs> is a trope in romantic comedies. Oh, here we go. A Baxter is the guy that the love, like the woman, typically, the woman is a, going to marry or is in like, has been in a long relationship with, and he's a totally nice guy. He's like very consistent, but like the woman is drawn to the kind of like emotionally unavailable or complicated or damaged guy who's like hotter and tom hanks i guess <laughs> is tom hanks hot no <laughs> he's not Stirring ugly he's definitely not ugly he's just not hot i don't know i i'm inclined to agree yeah like if you like when was he peak hanks forrest gump was gump hanks peak <laughs> what a gump, terrible sentence gump peaks the hanked hanked in a gumpy peaks gump hot saving private gump hanks 
<laughs> Saving Private I think Gump Hanks, the franchise. I um, slash a man called Gump <laughs> Private Ryan. A man called Gump Ryan. <laughs> How many movies that we're going to watch are based around World War II? It has to be like In a this... dozen. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of war movies. Like, especially kind of 30s, 40s. Um, it's going to be a lot of like World War I, World War II. I mean, it's... shit. Even 50s. Yeah. I mean, well, because like it's the only, it's such a huge occurrence that it's the only thing that anything creative could even be about. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only <laughs> thing. Like, how crazy is that? Like, obviously, it's an understatement to say World War II was a little cray. But it was so, it preoccupied the minds of everybody in the world for many years. Like for half a decade. Yeah, it's because they didn't, they didn't have the internet. There was like nothing else to think or talk about. Right. Well, not even that. Like, yeah, yeah that's true too. Because it's the only news that really pervaded every single airwave or newspaper. Yeah. That's wild. Like, who's writing a wild. story about their childhood where they chased butterflies? Like, who's. Like, what's, like, who's writing, is Dr. Seuss, is this Dr. Seuss's era? That's crazy. That, let me number, let me do the numbers crunch I on that. I think it is, because now this is, this is the time when everybody is preoccupied with global warfare, and, and Theodore Geisel's over there thinking about cat in the hat, and one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. That's wild. What were we talking about? Laszlo is a Baxter because he's so obviously the best choice for Ilsa. Shout out to the Baxters of the world, man. We stand Baxters. He's just like... Stan Baxter, nice to meet you. <laughs> LLC. Stan Baxter, LLC. Um, yeah, I just I just think Ilsa should probably go with Baxter also. I mean, or she should be by herself. You mean Laszlo. I don't think... I don't think Laszlo, sorry. <laughs> I just don't like I as much as I think Rick is the coolest guy in town, I think he's kind of unavailable. I have The thing is though he's been hurt by love, so he's not He's ultimately like a decent person. He's so he's been so bombarded he got sideswiped so hard by heartbreak that he basically became a nihilist who low-key not necessarily sympathizes with Nazis, but like he doesn't really care one way or another. Which is a crazy mentality to have. Especially in this era. He like he just yeah. kinda he's he claims to be neutral throughout this whole thing. You learn that he's he's really not. He really leans more towards the Allied side and he wants to help. Victor yeah, Laszlo and his cause. Because they keep saying that he ran guns in Ethiopia and fought on like the resistance side in Spain or something like that. So maybe that's like kind of who he used to be. And then he's just so love struck that he's just like, nothing really matters anyway. So, and then, oh, oh, I'm going to talk about, can I talk about my favorite scene in this movie? Yeah, go ahead. We'll go for it. Because Victor Laszlo, like, like he kind of painted the, the Baxter archetype as being like, a little bit of a, a a safe sap, but Victor Laszlo is, a, I think, a little bit cooler. No, he's like he, a woke. He's a woke daddy for sure. He's a bit of a woke daddy, um, and he also. So he's talking to Rick. He's like, "We need the." So Rick has all these passes to basically get people out of Casablanca that he's acquired through illegal means. I think, like, I think some courier robbed. The Nazis who are stationed there, and then he obtained them. Um, so he's like in trouble by the people who run Casablanca. Yeah. Um, and he secretly has these passes to get people out. Mm -hmm. um, and now Laszlo is asking, he's like, listen, we need those to get out. I need to, you know, reconvene with, you know, the resistance and all that. And basically, Rick is like, I have no sympathy for you. You basically stole my girl but which is not correct but i mean she was with him before she was with rick so uh but he's still upset with him because he is i guess a target of ilsa's affection um 
Rick is basically like, all I care about is the bar, is Rick's. And Lazo's like, all right, fine, that's cool, I get it. And then he basically makes it the problem of the bar when he starts doing like patriotic songs in the bar and then like the Nazis are also singing, they're singing like their fight songs and then they're singing like allied fight songs and they're kind of clashing with each other in a scene where like then the police just shuts the whole thing down. So now this bar is shut down because of this conflict and he's like, okay, I can't ignore this anymore. I was like, that is a genius alpha level play right there by Vic. Oh, so you think he was like manipulating that situation a little bit? Yeah, he took. Yeah. he basically took the fight to Rick and said, "Like, okay, you don't care about this. I'm going to make it about something that you care about." Now your bar is shut down, and that's, I think Rick kind of respects him for that chess move. That's a really good observation. I didn't get that at all. I saw it more as random, but I think you're probably right. I think I'm right too. In fact, yeah. I'll take a nom. I'll take an Oscar nom for. But even just reviewing, even for just seeing this, I'll take a nom. At least best cinematography. You want best cinematography? Yeah. For this movie. Posthumously. <laughs> After I pass, I will claim I will claim the Oscar for best cinematography for Casablanca. Um fine. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the Academy, and I'd like to thank nobody else. Shit. <laughs> Not like your mom or dad, or... Dead to me. Fuck. Yeah. I'm cinephotographer now. What did you say? I'm cinephotographers now. Ugh. You Best. said... That's the second ugliest thing you've said this episode. <laughs> Forrest Gump private <laughs> private Forrest Gump what else is Tom Hanks in Big Gump how about just Big Gump as a movie I think that's basically Forrest Gump right because he's a kid and then he gets big as an adult yeah yeah you're right you're right <laughs> um I want to ask you ask so me. Rick Rick has a whole change of heart Richard Richard by the end of the movie has a whole change of heart Rick literally shoots, like, a top Nazi officer. <laughs> and, like, so he does this very Hell noble yeah. thing. Then he shoots Then he shoots a Nazi officer, which is cool. I agree with that. But, like, he doesn't, for, like, his change of heart, he, he isn't, there's no, like, the hammer doesn't fall on him in any way. There's no consequence for him doing what he does. And is that okay? No consequence for him backstabbing the Nazis? Backstabbing the Nazis, getting Laszlo and Ilsa out of Casablanca. What are your thoughts on that? Do you care? Does it matter? His, first of all, I think his, that's not even his fight. Maybe it is by the end of the movie, but I think his mind is just preoccupied with his romance with Ilsa and how he can end up with her. And I think he ultimately loses that battle because he doesn't end up with her. So I think that's, Maybe by the end, it's not the only thing he cares about, but it's definitely the primary thing. I think ultimately, the ending for Rick is sad from his perspective. I think from the audience's perspective, I'm like kind of glad that he's moving on. I don't think like maybe like like I liked the idea of their romance, but I think it, their relationship is probably weird if you put it under a magnifying glass, right? Like, what do you mean? It's you it's totally get... normal to keep secrets from your love. <laughs> that's that's kind of the the crux of a successful relationship. That's Hide kind of the game you got to play. O. That's the game, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> that's that sigma grind set in order to obtain Excuse love. Excuse me? That's that love speed run. You got to withhold all info about you. So that you hold the power. Oh my god, are you fucking... Am I talking to Jordan Peterson right now? <laughs> Introduced at the top of the episode is Blue Regard Q Kazoo, but it is in fact IJP. Morgan. <laughs> anyway. 
Um, I th- I'm a little sad for Rick. I suppose I don't think his, I think his ending is not perfect. I don't think it's a sunny ending. I think he just kind of he gets to he gets to stay in Casablanca. And and live a, you know. Live as a big shot in Casablanca, which he already was doing, but now he kind of has this, at least a resolution, to his romance with Ilsa. Even if it's totally. not the resolution he would have wanted. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. The consequence is that he's losing Ilsa. Um, you're really smart about movies, man. I've seen seven. <laughs> I've seen um, all the Rockies. And I've seen Along Came Polly. Twice, which counts as two movies. <laughs> can, so can I we, know about shit. Can I talk about how Casablanca is Tenet? <laughs> yeah, because you're wrong, but go ahead. So, the big thing, it's not actually Tenet, but I think... So this whole premise is a lie. The, I mean, Tenet is about, like, these men kind of fighting for this woman. I mean, not, they're not fighting for... Like, John David Tenet Washington is? Is, is, is fighting to free... Spoilers like, for Tenet, by the way. <laughs> The small story is... Spoilers for Casablanca, woman... by the way. Right, yeah. Sorry. Totally. So, sorry, go ahead. John David Washington in Tenet is trying to free, like, sort of get uh, this woman out of the grasps of this, like, man who wants to, like, destroy the entire world through, like, time manipulation. Played by okay. Kenneth Branagh. Uh, so that's the small story. The big story, which there is one in Casablanca. There's a big and small story. In the big story, <laughs> time manipulation, end of the world. <laughs> right. Ultimately, Casablanca <laughs> and Tenet are about two men becoming pals. <laughs> you can say that about literally any story that's ever been crafted. It's about two folks becoming buds. At the end, okay, there's basically, in Tenet, there's basically the equivalent of, Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship between Robert Pattinson and John David Washington. Do you disagree? Yes, that is similar. That's basically my whole point. But I, but in the sense that, like, it doesn't make any sense that they're friends. You know what I mean? But it's nice because friends are nice. <laughs> so go watch fucking Barney, then. It's basically the same movie in your eyes. The Barney movie? With the egg? <laughs> Is that what happens? I think so. You're thinking of Osmosis Jones. <laughs> I think I'm thinking of Along Came Polly. You're thinking you're always thinking about Along Came Polly. <laughs> you're basically I mean, you're thinking about any movie where people become friends. It doesn't mean that this is like Tenet. This is our last episode because you're actually <laughs> really coming at me. I don't appreciate take. this. I don't please appreciate this vitriol that you're spewing. <laughs> this is insane. I gotta check you on this as your co-host. I gotta check you on this shit, dude, because you're out of line. This is absolutely slander and gotcha journalism. <laughs> on what grounds? You're under arrest. That's all I have to say. Tenet and Casablanca are the same movie because it's about two guys becoming pals. <laughs> it's a crazy <laughs> take, but fine. <laughs> also, there's a small and big story. That's like saying that two movies are similar because they both have characters. Like, that you can't just say shit and expect me not to call you on it. I have a mic. I could say whatever I want. <laughs> That's what scares me most. <laughs> Do you want to hear what some of the what 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 some of the people had to say about this film? First, have, yeah. Let's talk about who won Best Picture. Oh and why. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Who won? Uh, so who? Well, so th- so this one won Best Picture. Casablanca. Casablanca won Best Picture. Okay. I guarantee I'm going to have heard of none of these films that it ran against. It's going to be like uh, Sand in My Wallet or something. Some old shit. Sorry, I'm like, trying to find it. The Baby Takes Manhattan. 
or something the like baby that. takes manhattan go and read these names and you tell me it's not something akin to the baby takes manhattan there's a lot of nominees let me read all these okay so casablanca wins the other nominees are for whom the bell tolls oh okay yeah Hemingway. another war movie it has to be uh heaven can wait sounds the, old the human comedy <laughs> Ew, what is that? It's, it's it's like the human centipede. It's the prequel to the human centipede. That sounds awful. What is that? Can you tell me what that's about? Do you know? No, I have no idea. I've, I don't I've, want I, to. I haven't, yeah. I've only heard of like four of these movies. That sounds I'll... like the worst Marvel movie of all time. <laughs> the human comedy. Um, In Which We Serve is another one. Sounds boring. Madame Curie. The Biopic more about the, about Marie Curie. The more the merrier. <laughs> okay. The Stupid. Oxbow Incident, which is based on the John Steinbeck book. Okay. Uh, the Song of Bernadette and Watch on the Rhine. <laughs> I hate that <laughs> string of words. It's awful. So Casablanca obviously met, should have won, probably. <laughs> have you seen any of those other ones? No. I've, I've, you know, I know for whom the bell tolls. I've heard of Heaven Can Wait, and I know the Oxbow incident. Otherwise, all these might as well be from Mars or something. Is it, is it crazy to think that if a story is not, if a movie is not a truly original story, that it should be docked points? Like, is Casablanca based on something? Like, I like the idea that somebody just crafted something, wrote a script, and then it became a movie. Like, it wrote it for a movie. It wasn't based on a book. It wasn't based on a real person or historical events. It was just a fake story. It didn't happen, and it came from someone's noggin. And that's pretty special, and I think that deserves points. If you're fucking based off Steinbeck, I think that's a demerit. Is that fair to say? Thank you. Thank you. That's an Oscar. That's an Oscar. Yes, thank you. Thank um, you. I don't disagree with you. Um, I don't know. Adaptation is its own skill. At the same time, like it feels like everything is a remake of everything these days, or it's based on something, and it's like, can we just yeah, can tired. somebody just write a fucking script and make it? Can it just is it? It's not that hard. It doesn't sell. Studios are own, like, won't buy it. Like, it's movies sad. are their own art form. We don't have to, like, crib stories from books or whatever. I, I don't know. It's That's but what I'm saying. I don't totally disagree with you. Um, Casablanca was based on... Oh, here we go. No, no well, It was based on an unproduced play that wasn't even exactly what the movie is. Okay. It's like people found, like, I think the screenwriters or whoever the producers found this play... And then they like made it like a star vehicle for Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman, and okay. it's then, a like, little bit added cheating. A bunch of different elements, yeah. Okay, I do think that's a little bit cheating. Like they had the story basically. I guess they made tweaks and all that, but I don't know. I think it's a it's a little bit more daring to have a story that you or a team of people came up with themselves. And then they just pitched it, and it and people loved it. I think that's so hard to do, and I think it deserves more credit than someone who's like, we know Spider, like we know Spider Man's story. We like Spider Man. Everyone likes Spider Man. If you're making a Spider Man movie, it's gonna be liked because I like Spider Man. Like this, congrats for making a good movie, but you kind of had a little bit of a handicap. This is a good thread to follow because so far the movies we've covered. Yeah, have been based on something, and I th I feel like that's going to be the case for a lot. Of, I think it's just a case for a lot of movies in general. Yeah, I think cinema is a sham. How about that thread? We should actually I... stop this podcast <laughs> on the account of cinema. Cin on the account of cinnamon being it. a sham. <laughs> cinnamon is a sham. <laughs> you heard it here first. The podcast is over. Tune in again next week. For absolute we be... darkness. <laughs> For radio silence. We will have a one hour long moment of silence for the death of film as we know it.
How about it's always, that? It's always been a dead art form. It's never had <laughs> any originality. No merits. It's just a bunch of hacks circle jerking around. And that's all movies. Thoughts? See you next week, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one, Best Picture, probably deserved to win. Uh, I think so. I don't know what any of those other movies are. So, Yeah, they're probably stupid and bad. So why don't you... <laughs> There's some old, old man right now who is just shaking his stick right before he dies. He, right now, he's fist in the air at you. He's shaking his fist. He's like, "Watch on the ride is my favorite <laughs> film." God, it sounds so awful. Do you think "Watch on the Ride" has to be somebody's favorite movie? Right, like every movie is somebody's favorite movie. I'm sure it's probably incredible. Somebody probably loves the human comedy. <laughs> How can you not? It's about humans and comedy, my two favorite things. <laughs> All right. God. You want to tell me what the people had to say about uh, Casablanca? Yeah, so I have a um, I've I've sourced some reviews online for people who have spoken about Casablanca. I will say, um, out of all the movies that we've reviewed thus far, this one is probably the target of the most <laughs> vile vitriol. <laughs> well, it's probably because people are like, "This is not the best movie ever made." I don't know what people are talking about. That's true. I think it has that converse effect where it's like. There's a target on its back because it's supposedly one of the best movies of all time. Yeah. Um, but people did not like this. Um, Roger Ebert says, movie isn't even in color. Like, what were the directors thinking when they made this? They forgot to color in the picture. They probably didn't color it in because they can't color. I know they sure as hell can't write a script. <laughs> if I was duff, de if I was, damn it. If I was dumb, deaf, and blind, I would have still hated this garbage offensive also that wasn't roger ebert because i read his review and he gave it right. four stars and it's a very okay, my bad. intelligent this was review yeah sorry this was uh casablanca fiend 99 so 69 for 20 <laughs> um very many casablanca puns which i do appreciate um i've i've seen Casablanca. People were calling it Asablanca. More like Cacablanca. More like more like Cuxablanca. Should be should be called Casablanca or Cuxablanca. Also, I could not tell these white men apart. Gonna blame that on the black and white and the fact that everyone just wears suits. Fair. Um Cuxablanca. Cuxablanca. <laughs> Cucks a blank. <laughs> Calling this film Cucks a Blanca is such a power move and I think should be awarded an Oscar for that. Absolutely. O Oscar for that. Absolutely. Best original screenplay goes Best to Cucks a Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Absolutely. Um, Candy Corn Lover says No Joe Biden within the first 10 minutes could not finish the movie. <laughs> Do you get that though? No. It took me. I was I read that I was laughing so much and then at night I just jolted up in bed because I realized that Casablanca translates I guess roughly to White House. Oh, okay. So I was like, "Oh my god, that's Candy actually lover." What an actually an incredibly movie. crafted joke. Uh, that's what I said. I was like, "Pretty good." Uh, these are all one star reviews. By the way, gotcha. These people, I tried. There were no interesting five stars. It was more just people just raving about this movie. Yeah, it's like masterpiece, um, incredible. It's like, all right, whatever, sure. Yeah, like keep keep your pants on. Um, Secretariat is a better movie. Period. Excuse me. <laughs> no movie about a horse is better than Casablanca. <laughs> well, Racing Stripes. Well, I guess it's a zebra, but still. Last one I'll read. Um, this one is the most poignant and um, by a long shot. You look like you're about to cry, so I'm excited. Decent, I guess. But due to the fact that there isn't a peach with cum in it, I have to give this film a half star. There you have it. 
Excuse me? Yeah. Is he wrong? A peach with cum? I didn't see it during my watch, so. God, the internet is such a vile place. <laughs> the internet is such a vile and beautiful place. Actually, I lied. This is the last one I'll read. My grandpa, this is by Mr. Craig. My grandpa made me watch this once, and I was bored to tears. As soon as it ended, I stormed into the kitchen. I grabbed a cantaloupe and launched it at his head for putting me through this garbage. I think the human race has run its course. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I think we all, all need to just take a, take a sabbatical. <laughs> like, permanently? Yeah. Like, for good? Let evolution do its thing and maybe we'll come back in like two million years and be different humans have caused all the bad ever right yeah crazy yeah that's kind of a that's a massive burden to bear that's to on be sure. us yeah <laughs> see you next week folks one, two, three, four. These boys only want the best stuff. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that Michael Bay shit. They want the shit that bops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. Uh -huh. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar wieners. Oscar wieners. Oscar Wieners, these boys are the Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. Please don't take my jam. Please don't take my jam. Please don't take my jam. Please don't take my, please don't take my, please don't take my, please don't take my, jam. 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 Seedless, seedless strawberry. <laughs>